If you have ever used a computer with only 128 gigs of storage, you'll know how quickly it fills up. That is the case with this MacBook Air. It comes with only 128 gigs of storage and after installing a couple of apps, the storage is almost full and the computer is practically unusable. Well, if you are in the same situation, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to show you step by step on how to easily upgrade the storage of your MacBook from 128 gigs to one terabytes using an NVMe SSD. All right, guys, the MacBook that we are going to upgrade today is the MacBook Air 13 inch early 2015. But this sort of a method should work fine starting from the MacBook Air late 2010 all the way up to MacBook Air 2017. So if you have any of these MacBooks, this sort of a method should work just fine, although you might want to Google and check. This video is specifically for the MacBook Air 13 inch early 2015. Now for this upgrade to work properly, you will need a couple of things. First off, you will need an NVMe SSD. I've bought this one terabyte Western Digital Blue NVMe SSD. So this is what we are going to replace the original 128 gig Apple SSD with. Along with this, you will also need an M.2 NGFF SSD adapter. This converts the proprietary Apple SSD interface to standard M.2. So this allows you to install a standard M.2 NVMe SSD in a MacBook. You will also need a USB drive that has at least 16 gigabytes of storage. This is to reformat and reinstall the macOS onto the new NVMe SSD. This is because the built-in internet recovery is not able to detect the NVMe SSD. But if we start our Mac up through a bootable USB drive that has the latest version of macOS on it, the disk utility will be able to see our new 1TB NVMe SSD. So that is why we will need to make a bootable USB drive with Mac OS installer on it. Lastly, to open up the MacBook, you will need a screwdriver set with P5 Pentalobe and T5 Torx bit. I'll put the links in the video description, so don't worry about that. Now, if you decide to take a backup of all your apps, files, and settings from the old SSD, then you will need another empty USB drive. This is optional, but still, I'm going to show you how to take a full system backup using Time Machine. And by the way, this is a 128 gig USB drive. So this USB drive will accommodate all the existing files that are on the 128 gig Apple SSD. All right, so these are all the items that we need to upgrade the storage on our MacBook. And once you have them all ready, let's move on to the MacBook. All right, guys, step number one is to take a backup of everything that is already on our Mac. For this, we will use Time Machine. So if you already have a Time Machine backup, you might want to skip this step. So what I'm going to do is plug the 128 gigabyte USB drive in. And as you can see, it shows up. So we are going to open System Preferences and open up Time Machine from over here. We are going to select a backup disk and we will select the USB drive, which is this one and select use disk and in about two minutes the backup will start automatically now like i said before this step is completely optional you might want to skip this step if you want to start from scratch but i am guessing a lot of you guys will want to take a backup of all your existing files settings and applications that are already installed on your mac so we'll let the backup continue it will take a little bit of time because we are backing up a lot of stuff so we will wait for this to complete Okay, so Time Machine has finished backing up all of our stuff on the USB drive. Now we only took 15 gigabytes of backup because I have already removed most of the stuff from the Mac, but Time Machine will back up everything that is on your Mac OS hard drive, including your apps, settings, and even the wallpaper. All right, so now we will move on to step number two. That is, we will now download the files that are needed to create a bootable Mac OS USB installer. So for this, open up Launchpad and then open up the App Store. In the App Store, search for Mac OS. Now at the time of filming this video, the latest version of Mac OS is Mac OS Big Sur. So we will download Mac OS Big Sur by clicking on Get. And we will click on Download. Now as you can see, it's a fairly big download. It's about 12 gigabytes. So this will take a while and we are gonna minimize these windows. Okay, so while the download is going on in the background, we will plug the USB drive in into the Mac because we have to reformat the USB drive into Mac OS file system. 
So we will plug the USB drive in. You can see the USB drive shows up. So now open up Spotlight Search and look for Disk Utility. Open Disk Utility up. Okay, so in Disk Utility, you can see our USB drive is showing up under External. Here it is. So what we are going to do is right click and select Erase. You can give it a name if you want, but SanDisk is fine. Now change the format to Mac OS Extended Journal. And that's it, erase the USB drive. Shouldn't take more than five seconds. And after it's done, just click on done. And that's it, our USB drive is now ready. So now we have to wait for the download to finish. And after that, we will proceed to step number three. All right, so after the download completes, this window should open up automatically. Now it says here to set up the installation of Mac OS Big Sur, click continue. But we don't wanna install Mac OS right now. So we will click over here and select Quit install Mac OS and we will also close this settings thingy. Now what you want to do is click on go and tap on applications. Now inside applications locate install Mac OS and we will right click on this and select show package contents. Then click on contents then go to resources inside this folder locate create install media and then we will set this window aside. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is open up terminal. You can open up terminal by going into launchpad, click on other and open up terminal from over here. Otherwise, you can open up spotlight search and then look for terminal. So once terminal opens, you need to type in the following command. Type in sudo sudo, give a space, and then drag and drop the create install media file onto the terminal. And you can see it automatically pastes the create install media link over here. Now, another thing that you will need to type is dash dash volume, V-O-L-U-M-E. Give a space and then you will need to drag and drop the removable drive onto the terminal window. If you don't see your removable drive icon on the desktop, click on go and then select go to folder. Type in forward slash volumes and this will show you all of the volumes that are mounted onto your Mac. So SanDisk is our removable USB drive. So we will drag and drop this icon onto the terminal window. Then we will press enter. It will ask for the password. So I'm going to type in my password, enter. Now it says here to continue, we need to erase the volume. Okay, so we are going to press Y and press on enter. And now you just have to wait the terminal window will do everything by itself and it will create a bootable usb drive with the mac os installer on it the speed depends on how fast the usb drive is but it really should not take more than 10 to 15 minutes and that is it guys our usb drive is now ready and bootable so now we can go ahead and close the terminal window and also close this thing now just to double check let's open this thing up and there's the install mac os icon so our USB drive is now ready. All right, so we will start by removing the 10 screws that secure the lower case. These are P5 pentalobe screws, so you'll need the P5 pentalobe screwdriver bit to remove these. Once all of these screws are undone, put your fingers between the display and the case and pull upwards to open up the MacBook Air. And that's it, now you have access to the logic board of the MacBook Air. Oh, and before you do anything else, you must disconnect the battery from the logic board. On MacBook Air, the battery connector is right here. So just pull on the plastic tab to disconnect the battery from the main logic board. That's it. Now we can safely take the old SSD out. And to take the old SSD out, you will need the T5 Torx bit. By the way, I'm using a T4 Torx bit because my screwdriver set does not have T5, but as you can see, it works just fine. So undo the screw and then gently remove the old SSD out of the logic board. Next, grab the new SSD and make sure that the adapter is properly and securely installed. Next, align the adapter and push the new SSD until it clicks into position. Just like that. Then reinstall the screw. Make sure that you reconnect the battery and finally put the rear case back into its position and install all of these screws. Now we will proceed to the next part, that is we will reinstall the Mac OS operating system. Okay, so before you power your Mac on, 
plug the USB drive in that you have just created with the bootable Mac OS installer on it. So plug the USB drive in and switch your Mac on. And as soon as you hear the chime, press and hold the Alt Option button and you should see this screen. So it says here, install Mac OS Big Sur and we're gonna press enter and we will wait for the MacBook to boot from the USB drive. And I would also recommend that you have your MacBook plugged in so that the battery doesn't run out. Okay, so after the MacBook boots up from the USB drive, we need to select disk utility. This is because we have to first initialize the new SSD that we have installed. If you select install Mac OS Big Sur, it won't work. So first we need to initialize. So I will select disk utility and continue and we should see our new hard drive or SSD over here. So this is our new one terabyte NVMe SSD. So select erase. I think I should zoom in a little bit. All right, so over here we will select erase. You can rename this to Mac OS. Format APFS, that's fine. And the scheme is GUID partition map. So everything is correct and I'll press on erase. And that's it, we will press on done. So now our hard drive has been initialized and it is ready to install Mac OS. So we will close the disk utility and select install Mac OS Big Sur. Click on continue, agree, agree. We will install this on our internal hard drive, which is this one. Click on continue and that's it. It is now reinstalling Mac OS Big Sur onto the new NVMe SSD. And also make sure that your MacBook is plugged in while this is going on because you don't want to run out of battery. So we will let this thing run and I'll be right back. All right, so that actually took a fair bit of time, about 45 minutes, but here we are. Mac OS is now installed on our new SSD. So I'm gonna start with the initial setup. All right, guys, we are now at the migration assistant. So now is the time that you should plug in the USB drive that has the time machine backup on it. So since this one is already in use, I'm going to plug this thing in into the left USB port. So that USB drive is plugged in. So we're going to select from a Mac time machine backup or startup disk. Continue and we should see our USB drive over here. There it is, backup of Charlie's MacBook Air. So select this and tap on continue. So here's our backup, continue. So this should also bring back the wallpaper that was there on this SSD. So we're going to tap on continue, make sure everything is selected. Okay, so now continue. And now the migration assistant is restoring everything from the USB drive onto our new SSD. All right, so the migration is complete. Let's tap on done. Okay, now let's log in. I'm going to sign in later, so set up later. Skip. All right, there you go. So as you can see, after the restoration process, our original wallpaper is now back. All of the original apps are there. So Steam is also there. I had Steam installed on this SSD. So I'm guessing it has copied all of the applications. Let's open up Launchpad. So there you go. All of my apps are there, including Google Chrome. That's awesome. So if I go to my documents, you can see all of the original documents are there. So our restoration process has completed successfully. Now guys, finally, let's check out our storage. So Apple icon about this Mac and we will go to storage and check this out. One terabyte solid state PCI express drive and about 967 gigabytes is available out of one terabytes. I also ran the disk speed test to see which SSD is faster. So with the old Apple SSD, we got a write speed of about 612 megabytes per second and a read speed of 130 megabytes per second. Now the new Western Digital Blue NVMe SSD gives us a write speed of 1300 megabytes per second. That is a huge bump in write speed and our read speed is at about 1,437 megabytes per second. Holy moly guys, this has been a substantial upgrade over the old Apple SSD. And speaking of the old Apple SSD, I suggest that you store it in a safe place because if something goes wrong with the new SSD, you can always plug this old SSD back in and make your Mac functional. All right guys, it's been about a week since the upgrade and thankfully, 
there have been absolutely no issues. And I really thought I'd wait about a week before uploading this video just to see if there are any issues that pop up. And thankfully there are absolutely no issues, the MacBook Air is working perfectly fine. So yeah, we'll call this a successful upgrade and wrap this video up. And guys, if you have any questions about this upgrade, do let me know in the comment section down below. So guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. And also follow me on my social media accounts. I'll put all the links in the video description. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.